Thanks for joining me today. My name is Trevor Ginther. I'm working here with Petro West and we're going to do a trip inspection based off the National Safety Code Standard 13 Schedule 1. We're going to look at a truck, we're going to look at a trailer, also a pickup and utility trailer. So sit back and enjoy and we'll see you in a bit. Okay, we're here, we're going to start the trip inspection. So a key point with the trip inspection is safely setting up the truck and trailer. So what we're going to do is we're going to dynamite the brakes on the truck, dynamite the brakes on the trailer, we're going to chalk your tires, place a tranny in low gear, and remove the keys. So with the trip inspection, you got to remember it's going to take you about 20 to 30 minutes to do the inspection on the truck and finish the paperwork. Okay, so we have a trip inspection here. Uh, the trip inspection has a wheel retorque that's been completed and also has a defect on the trailer but the driver's determined it does not need to be repaired. Okay, so you got to fill at the top of the form. All the check marks are the items that the driver's checked. And the bottom of the form here, uh, we've got a new category. It's called uh, uh, wheel retorque. Okay, so on the tractor, the driver put a check mark there. So then under that, there's wheel location. So the retorque was done on axle two left. So the steering axle would be axle group one. Then axle group two would be the first drive axle. So axle two left, there was a wheel retorque done, okay? So the driver just made note there was one done and the location of it. So the next part we're gonna look at is uh, in route on the trailer. So pre-trip means uh, all these defects, if there is any, would be at the beginning of your work shift, okay? So in route means throughout the day. Uh, this driver throughout the day found that there was a lighting issue with the trailer. So he checked it off under in route defects on the defect chart. So then we go down to uh, the driver certified that uh, there's the certification reads, I uh, certify repairs were unnecessary for the safe operation of the vehicles. So how the driver determined that is he took his trip inspection book, looked at schedule one, then these are the header categories. Uh, these are minor defects. These are major defects. The driver found the defect did not fall in the major defect category, so the vehicle could continue to the end of the work shift. Okay. So what the driver did is we go midway on the form is he did the inspection, so he fills that out, print and sign. Then we go down, he checks off that he did inspect the vehicle to Schedule 1 standards. Then he also checks off that he certified the repairs were unnecessary for the safe operation of the vehicle and the time he found that defect. So the trip inspection time was at 7. He found that defect at 10 a.m. So he puts a time he found it and he prints and signs that he found that defect. It did not need to be repaired. He continued with his trip. Then on the bottom of the form, under trailer repairs, he made note of what that defect is, hands that into the shop staff, then they can start a work order and get that repaired. Here at Petro West, we require all of our drivers that drive vehicles over 4,500 kilograms to do a written trip inspection. That could be a heavy vehicle like this trailer and truck, or a light vehicle like a pickup truck and utility trailer. Trip inspections are valid for 24 hours from the time they're created. Also with a trip inspection, you're going to have major and minor defects. And to figure out what those are, it's right in the trip inspection book. It's going to be on the front cover, and it's going to say Schedule 1. So with that schedule, you're going to have major defects. And if you find something on your vehicle under the major defect category, that means that vehicle is out of service till that's repaired. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit more about trip inspections. So trip inspections are time, date, location, and mileage specific. So at the time you're looking at the vehicle, that needs to be recorded time on the trip inspection document and the location. So with defects, if you find a defect on the truck or trailer after the initial inspection, that has to be written under in route defects. And that will be found on your trip inspection sheet under the remarks section. Okay, so now we're going to talk about lights. So with lights, since we're by a log truck here, we're going to have to have headache rack lights. We're going to have to have them extended. We're going to have red lights to the back, amber lights to the front lights on the front, left and right, signal lights in the back, red in color. Then we're going to go to the midsection of the cab, you're going to have your rotators, make sure they're on and working. Your marker lights above the cab, 
then also you're gonna have a light on the mirror here, make sure that's working also. Come up to the signal light, make sure you have a left and right signal light that can be seen from the front. And then we're gonna look at high low beam. So with high low beam, when you're in the cab, you wanna make sure when it's on high beam, it's gonna be notified in the cab, you're probably gonna have a blue light. And if you're on highway log truck, you're gonna have a mill placard on the front of the truck somewhere, or up top on the cab, identifying what mill you're hauling to. Rolling. Okay, we're at the left front side of the truck. We're gonna check some fluids now. We got your power steering fluid. Uh, I've already checked it, it's at the full mark. We're gonna make sure all the hoses are secure, there's no leaks. Make sure there's no leaks at the uh, reservoir or at the power steering itself. We're gonna check the engine oil. And the oil is full, that looks good. We're gonna check the alternator here, make sure it's secure. The belts are good. All the wiring's good on the back end of the alternator. Your compressor's secured. And then your main airline coming out, that's secured in there. And now we're gonna check just your windshield washer fluid. Okay, that's full, the lid's on. All right, so what we're gonna do is go to the other side and check your coolant level. Okay, so now we're at the right side, passenger side of the engine compartment. We're gonna check the engine cool level, that's good. I've already checked that, it's uh, at the top. We're gonna check the uh, air cleaner intake here. We just wanna make sure your joints are tight and there's no uh, cracks or worn areas in the piping or plastic. And then I'm just gonna take a quick look underneath the engine to make sure there's no leaks anywhere. Okay, so now we're at the left side of the vehicle, steering axle. So again, what you're gonna do on every axle group, check the tread face, sidewall, rim, lug nuts, and your hub levels, okay? So now we're gonna get into the steering. So with steering, a quick easy test, you're doing a trip inspection, you're by yourself. You can just grab the steering column and you can rock it back and forth. And when I'm rocking it, what I'm looking for is movement between the output shaft and pitman arm and then pitman arm to the drag link and then I follow it all the way back to the tie rod end. Okay, so with that, it's okay to have rotational movement, okay, but you don't want to have movement back and forth. And that's with a tie rod. A tie rod, you can rock it back and forth, but you shouldn't be able to lift it up and down. So you want all tight joints. Uh, another thing to look at is your U-joints. So with the U-joints up top on the steering column and at the bottom, you want to make sure that you rock it in rotation, then you pull it back and forth. Uh, a lot of times, especially in heavy haul applications, hitting rough roads, um, this uh, bolt nut can back off. You can rock it left and right, but if you pull back, you can almost pull this whole thing right off the uh, input shaft. So always give that a rock when you're doing a trip inspection. You're taking a quick look and then you're grabbing everything. You're gonna grab pitman arm, drag link, uh, steering arm and tie rod. You're giving everything a shake um, and then you're visually checking, making sure all your um, power steering mount bolts are secure. So now what we're gonna move on to is your suspension. So this truck's got a three leaf system. We got three mains on this side. So with the CVSA out of service criteria, I'll just give you a heads up. If you have one broken main leaf, that would be considered out of service. The definition of a main leaf is any leaf that contacts the front and rear spring hangers. Okay, so for trip inspection purpose, I'm going to grab the leaves, give them a shake, make sure they're tight. If I'm stepping right in there, I'm also going to give them a kick. And then I'm going to check the U-bolts, give them a shake, and then also your shock. When I've done that, I'm just going to visually check to make sure the spring hanger bolts on the front and rear are secure and they're tight. Okay, so now what we're looking at is the tie rod end. I'm just gonna rock the uh, steering column. We're looking for any excess movement in the tie rod end. Okay, so with that, with your trip inspection, uh, you wanna get hands on. Just give your tie rod end a shake, okay? You can have some rotational movement, but you don't want anything up and down, okay? Um, so we're checking from the steering column the pitman arm, drag link, steering arm down to the tie rod. You want to make sure there's no uh, excess movement and also take a look at your schedule one on the trip inspection just for major and minor defects if you find something. Alright, we're going to move on from here. 
All right, now we're gonna talk brakes for troop inspection here. So with brakes, I'm at the left front side of the truck here. We got uh, an automatic slack adjuster with a type 24 long stroke pot. So when we're checking brakes for a trip inspection, you're just checking the air lines. You're gonna check the brake pot itself and slack adjuster. Um, this one's a 24 long stroke. So with the 24 long stroke, um, the max stroke you're allowed is 24 inches. But within Petro West, we want all brakes to be inch and a half or less. Okay, um, if you have an automatic slack adjuster that's out of adjustment, that needs to be written down on your trip inspection and reported to the shop foreman, the maintenance staff. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna check free stroke. So I've got a brake buddy here, and with free stroke, we want uh, free stroke to be three quarters of an inch or less. That's the max free stroke we want, so we're just gonna test this one here. Okay, so this one's sitting somewhere between half an inch to three quarters of an inch. Uh, somewhere's in there, so you want everything under three quarters. The other thing we have on here is we've got a push rod indicator. So all your brakes on your truck and trailer should have push rod indicators. Because with your trip inspection, you have to see that your brakes are within standard. And with Petro West, you want all brakes no more than one and a half inches in stroke. Okay. Um, any brake that's out of adjustment will put the truck or trailer out of service. That schedule needs to be referenced. Uh, there's going to be major defects and minor defects. So just make sure you're aware of that. Again, everything's supposed to be at no more than one and a half inches. And when your brakes are applied, you want the inside angle of your brakes between your push rod and slack adjuster around 90 degrees. That's when you get the most brake force. The other thing on a steering axle, uh, and all axles, anytime that you have a uh, leaky wheel seal, if your brakes are contaminated with oil and you have continued dripping out of the bottom of your brake drum, that would be considered out of service on any axle group. Okay, now we're in the cab of the truck. Now I'm going to show you how you can check your brakes. Uh, we want to use the service brake so we can test the service side of the brakes. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a pry bar, we're going to wedge it under your brake, So what we've done is we've wedged the brakes on with a pry bar. Your brakes are all released, buttons are pushed in. Uh, we have about 45 pounds of application pressure. So we're going to check the service side of your brakes. We're checking the stroke and we're checking and listening for any air leaks. So we'll get out of the vehicle, do a walk around. The tires are already chalked, we're on level surface. So we're going to check the stroke of your brakes. So here at Petro West we want your brakes to be no more than an inch and a half in travel. Okay, we want brakes all to be adjusted correctly. Uh, the problem that you run into with brakes that are out of adjustment, you're still going to have brakes, it's still going to feel the same in the cab, but if you ever run into a panic situation, the more out of adjustment your brakes are, the longer your stopping distances are. So that can mean the difference between life and death for you or oncoming traffic. So again, if you can't do this application by wedging the brakes on, what you might have to do is the free stroke application where you're pulling every brake and you're making sure they're under three quarters of an inch in their stroke. Okay, it's, it's really important to use those brake stroke indicators so you can see with your eyes the stroke of each and every brake. Okay, now that we've finished all the underhood checks and we check the steering axle brakes, we're just going to check the driver's side here. So we're going to check mirrors. You're going to want to check them left and right to make sure they're not cracked and they're secured to the truck. We're going to check the door here just to make sure it opens and closes correctly. It stays latched. You're going to check your grab handle to make sure that's secure in your top and bottom step. The other check we're going to do is we're going to check the C-VIP decal just to make sure it's current. Okay, so to continue on with the left side here, we're going to check the fuel tank. We're going to make sure your straps are secure. There's no dripping fuel. Any dripping fuel anywhere on the fuel system, whether it's a tank, cap, or under the hood, would be out of service under CVSA. Okay, so the cap's secure. That's good. Now we're going to check the exhaust system. You want to make sure the heat shield's in place so the driver doesn't get burnt, uh, get in and out of the cab, and make sure there's no charring marks that would indicate any leaks of exhaust. Okay, so the other thing we need to check on left right side of the vehicle is you want to have your tear and GVW weights. So your emptied weight and your loaded max weight. Okay, now we're going to talk about uh, securement of hand tools. So hand tools have to be secured from front and back movement, side to side, and up and down. Okay, so most hand tool problems on vehicles 
is they might be secured front and back, left and right, but they're not secured from upward movement, okay? So to be in standard, we need to secure it from upward movement. So we've got a pin. We're just gonna hook that pin in. We've drilled a hole in the handle. Now this is secured from upward movement. If this pin was not in place, it's a $575 fine, plus carrier profile points. Okay, now moving back here, we've got a, a boomer and we've got some chains. So right now, as it sits, this would be out of service. It's a $575 fine bring this back into service. You need to close the lid, put the clasp on. Okay, that's back in service. Now we're gonna look at tire chains. So with tire chains, the biggest problem we have out there is tire chains aren't secured from upward movement. So an easy way to do that is take a tail chain, it's connected on both sides. You just hook it up. Okay, that would be in compliance. The other problem we have is people like using tarp straps as a primary means of securement. This can never be a primary means. All securement devices have to have a working load limit tag with WLL on those tags, okay? Uh, the other thing that we run into is plywood. Sometimes we use plywood to cover up our drive shaft and valves. So all this plywood has to be secured to the frame and if you're gonna do it with a, a strap, it has to have a working load limit on it. Now we'll move on back to the rest of the truck. Okay, now we're gonna check some more safety items. So you wanna make sure you got two bundles of streamers. Okay, you're gonna check your log light. You're gonna plug it in before you leave and make sure both lenses are working. Check your fire extinguisher. Make sure it's in the green, it's charged. Make sure you got warning triangles and check that you have a first aid kit. Okay, now we're just gonna quickly talk about airlines. So in your trip inspection, you're gonna check your airlines. So you have your supply line and you have your service line. When you hit the foot brake in the cab, you're gonna get air pressure in this line. When you're driving down the highway, there's always air pressure here. So it's critical that you have no air leaks, especially in this line. If this line were ever to rupture, the brakes on the trailer would dynamite and you could lose control of the vehicle. So again, when you have the brakes all released, when you're checking your brakes, checking the stroke, you wanna make sure that you have no air leaks out of the glad hands or anywhere in this line. Okay, so part of the trip inspection on the drive axle group is we're going to look at airbags. Make sure your airbags are inflated. If you have one deflated airbag, that'll put you out of service. And you're just going to quickly check your mount bolts, upper and lower. All right, we're on the left side of the truck. We're checking the tri-drive axle group. What you're going to check is the traction surface. Make sure you're not missing any uh, tread. You're going to check the sidewall. Make sure you don't have any deep cuts. And then you want to check in between the duals here. You want to make sure that you have no fist sized rocks in there. Clean out all the mud you can and check the rims for cracks. And then getting down to tires, an out of service tire would be a tire that's under 50% of its inflation pressure. So let's say this tire is supposed to be inflated to 100 psi. If it's at 49 psi, that would be considered out of service. And that's regardless if it has an active leak or not. Okay, now we're going to move down to the rims. We're going to check the rim for cracks. We're going to check all your lug nuts. Make sure they're tight. You can't spin any washers. And we're going to see if there's any oil leaks. So we're looking at the passenger side frame area and fifth wheel. So just some more areas to look at is your upper fifth wheel mount bolts. We've got four and four. So we got 16 holding the upper plate on. Then we're going to look at the lower plate bolts. Make sure they're tight and secured. So with CVSA, if you have 20% or more of these bolts loose, you'd be put out of service. So you want to make sure all those bolts are tight and present. The next thing we look at is the lower fifth wheel mount. We're going to check the mount for cracks. Then we're going to check the upper plate to make sure there's no cracks anywhere on the outside surface. And then also we're going to get right down and make sure we have no gap between the upper and lower abs here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just on the driver's side. We're checking the fifth wheel release handle. We make sure that's all the way in. Next step is we're, as we're doing our walk around, we're just checking the frame to make sure there's no frame cracks we can see. And the next step with that is if you can see the drive shaft, just take a visual of the drive shaft, make sure it's not twisted and the U-joints look good. Okay, so now we're at the trailer. We're just gonna check the hubs. So this trailer's got uh, sight glass, 
and a fill plug. You want to make sure the fill plug is in, the sight glass isn't cracked, and we're at the full. So when you're checking the trailer, you can do all the same checks as you do on the drive axles and steering axles. You're going to check rims, lug nuts, tires, and in between the duals. All right, so now we're at the back of the tractor. We're just going to quickly test some lights. We're going to test the running lights, four-way flashers, left-right signals, and your brake lights. All right, so we're going to do the uh, trip inspection on the trailer now. So looking at the trailer, we're going to check the C-VIP decal. We're going to make sure it's still valid. So we need to check the decal and check to make sure the paperwork is on the trailer or in the cab of the truck. We're going to check all bunk bolts. Okay, so this style here has four on the outside and four on the inside. So we've got eight in total securing this bunk. So you can get put out of service if you have one out of eight loose. This is a major securement system for your load. So just remember that and then we're going to continue on to bunk state and wrappers. All right, so now we're at uh, the front of the trailer. We're going to talk about bunk stakes. So the front bunk stakes on a trailer and the rear bunk stakes have to have daglo orange paint or reflective tape. And the tape has to be on the three exposed sides, the front side, the outside, and the back side. So the minimum requirements is the front stakes and rear stakes on every trailer. But best practices states you should have this on all stakes on a trailer. All right, now we're talking about wrappers. So all wrappers must have working load limit tags. Each tag must have WLL, that's working load limit, plus the weight associated. Some of the weight's gonna be in pounds, some can be in kilograms. So moving on, we're gonna talk about bunk stakes. All bunk stakes must be secured from upward movement. This bunk stake has a pin going through, so this meets the requirements. All right, so I'm just gonna check the landing gear quickly, just to make sure it's secured. I'm gonna work my way along. I'm checking every bunk and bolster. We're gonna look at the frame, make sure there's no frame cracks all the way along. Checking our lights. We're gonna work our way down. Lug nuts, hub levels, we're going to do all the same checks we did on the tractor. We're also going to look at the airbags and suspension. Then we're going to work our way right to the back. Alright, so now we're at the back of the trailer. We're just going to check lighting. So with lighting, we want to make sure we have left and right signal, brake lights, four-way flashers, uh, daytime running lights. Then also we want to check our marker lights. So with the CVSA Out of Service Guide, if we're missing left signal or right signal, you can put out a service and you can get a fine for that. So part of the checking the back of the trailer is we're going to check lights and we're going to check to make sure the license plate is on the back of the trailer and it's clearly visible. Alright, so now we've completed a trip inspection on the left side of the vehicle. Now you can do the right side of the vehicle. So you're going to look at the exact same things. So you're looking at frame, suspension, airbags, you're going to look at brakes, lighting. So just duplicate what we did on the left, on the right side. And a good inspection is going to take you 20 to 30 minutes to complete. Okay, a few more checks we're going to do in the cab is first we're going to check our seat belt, make sure it locks in place. We're going to check the driver's seat, make sure that locks in place also. Other things we're going to look for is projectiles in the cab. Any heavy loose items should be under the seat or should be in the jockey box. The next step is we're going to look at gauges. We're going to look at our oil temperature, we're going to look at our oil pressure, volts, water temperature, primary, secondary gauges, check our fuel level. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is do some more in-cab checks. So one of the checks we're gonna do is we're gonna check to make sure your two-way radio works. You can send and receive, okay? We're gonna check your windshield wiper washer. We're gonna turn them on, make sure your field of vision gets cleared. You're gonna check the glass to make sure there's no cracks in your vision. We're gonna look at the mirrors, make sure both your mirrors you can see to the back of your vehicle and the sides. And then also we're going to check your scales, just to make sure your scales are accurate and working in the cab. So some of the basic stuff we're going to go through is a safety fitness certificate. Some people call it the NSC certificate. With the safety fitness, it has to be carried in the vehicle at all times. Um, it's going to let the officer that pulls you over uh, know what hours of service legislation to apply. So we're here at Cutbank. So Cutbank is part of PetroWest Corporation. Um, the operating status is provincial, so provincial hours of service would apply. Uh, if this is one of the federal divisions, it would say operating status federal. Okay, so this document has to be carried in the cab. 
and then we go to the um, CVIP. So this CVIP is a truck CVIP. It's a handwritten CVIP. So the original copy has to go in the cab of the truck. Okay, the expiry date is going to be at the bottom of the sheet. It's good for a year in Alberta. Then we're going to look at a CVIP, but this CVIP is a new style. It's called the E-Form and it's computer generated. It's going to have an expiry date on the bottom of the sheet and uh, original copies have to be in the trailer. Then we're going to look at registration. So on the registration you're just going to verify the license plate and you're going to verify expiry and you're going to make sure it says Petrowest Corporation. Okay. So our federal divisions are Petrowest GPLTD and our provincial divisions are Petrowest Corporation. So you just want to verify that your registration and your safety fitness that you carry says either Petrowest Corporation or Petrowest GPLTD. Uh, moving on, insurance. So the insurance, you're just going to verify it's for Petrowest Corporation, GPLTD, and the expiry date. Make sure the expiry date's current. In BC, you're going to have your registration insurance on one document and your CVIP certificates are going to look a little different, but you have to carry all this basic information in the vehicle. There's going to be more information like permits, but that's going to be division specific. So for every trip inspection you want to test your low air warning. So you can do that when you fire up the truck and build air or you can feather down the brakes and see what pressure comes on. It should come on at 60 psi. There we go, we got lights that come on. So this one came on at about 65 psi. The minimum is 60 psi, so it's passed the test. Cut. All right, so one of the air tests we're gonna do is a truck should be able to build up from 50 psi to 90 psi in three minutes or less. So how you do that is you fire up the truck, bring it up to 1200 RPM, and then you time it so it's gonna pass if it goes from 50 to 90 in three minutes or less, and it's gonna fail if it's over three minutes. So we're gonna look at the primary and secondary gauges. We're gonna fire up the truck, and we're just gonna quickly check the air buildup time. So we got your primary, and you got your secondary. We've got our low air warning going on right now. That low air warning should uh, come on at a minimum at 60 psi. that test we just did. The other test we're going to look at is we're going to test the service side. Basically the, the foot pedal side of your brake system. So what we're going to do is have the air pressure at cut out. So on this truck it's about 120 psi. The brakes released, buttons are both in. You apply the foot brake, you hold it for three minutes. The first minute is what's called stabilization. The second two minutes is the actual test. And with that test, you're allowed a 4 psi drop for a tractor and a 2 psi drop for a, a trailer. So in combination, you can't lose any more than 6 psi in that 2 minute span. If you do, the system fails. Alright, now we're going to test the tractor protection system. How we test that system is, we disconnect both flat hands, so you got your service, you have your supply, our brakes are released on the truck and trailer, so when I break this flat hand, the wear is going to come out. When I break this glad hand, you're going to have a lot of air come out. The brakes are going to dynamite on the trailer. And in the cab of the truck, what we're going to watch is that red button, your trailer button, pops out above 20 psi. If it pops out above 20 psi, it's not out of service. If it's at 20 or below, it's out of service according to CVSA. So I'm going to disconnect right now. So you got your service side disconnected. Now we're going to do supply. So the brakes have dynamited. So now what we're going to do is go to the cab. We're going to hop in the cab, check the air pressure, see what the air pressure reads for when the button popped. Apply the foot brake, and we shouldn't have any air coming out of your service side or your supply side. If there is any air, the system failed, and you put out of service.
Okay, so I have someone in the cab just to help me out to show you this. So we got your supply side, your red, service side, blue. Okay, apply your brake. Okay, there's no air coming out of either the glad hand, so it's past the test. Okay, so now I'll, I'll hook these up. The one thing I want to verify is the air pressure the red button popped out at. Again, it's got to be over 20 PSI. Okay, so just to recap the tractor protection test, we disconnected both flat hands. We had air come out of your uh, supply side, your red side. The brakes dynamited on the trailer. The button in the cab popped out, the red button popped out above 20 PSI. Okay, then we had someone in the cab apply the foot brake. We shouldn't have any air come out of your blue side or your red side, okay, which we didn't. So it passes that test, if air did come out, you get placed out of service. So typically what happens with the tractor protection system, if you don't cycle it, it can gum up. In the winter time, it can freeze up or you can get sand or dirt within the valve. Okay, so this is a critical test. It's an easy one to test. You can have a trailer on or off. You don't have to have a trailer to disconnect. You can just run your uh, red and yellow button in the cab. So remember on your trip inspection, you should test this, okay? Okay, so with a trip inspection, it doesn't matter what kind of trailer you're going to inspect, you're going to still look at the same things. You're going to look at tires, brakes, suspension, lighting, so all that stuff is the same. The one thing I wanted to touch on here is reflective tape. So all trailers need reflective tape, and the requirement is you have to have at least 50% of the side covered. And you got to start from the rear, you got to have some reflective tape on the rear, and you also want to have some reflective tape on the front. Okay, I just want to touch on flat decks, low boys, high boys. The biggest problem we have is rocks and debris being loose on the deck. So this little rock here, that's a $575 rock. If that's on your deck and it comes off, that can take out a windshield that can cause an accident. So the biggest thing you need to do is you need to sweep your decks. If you're loading uh, cargo or heavy equipment, make sure they're clean as possible and sweep your decks before and after you leave.